Greetings, Cyclopians. Welcome to Cyclops Podcast 19, brought to you by H.P. Lovecraft's The Curse of Yig. And Yig, what we were just talking about, Tom, yeah, and I was just, I'm Dan, by the way. Well, and I'm Tom. Tom. <laughs> we were just talking about Yig, and uh, Tom says, well, there's nothing very good that's, that you get from a name like Yig. <laughs> no, it's an ancient text you're not supposed to read that kills everything Don't and everyone. open that book. If it has a pentagram and a star on it, just <laughs> leave it alone. Keep walking. This looks like it'll be fun. Go to something nice like the puppy's calendar or something in the bookstore, but stay away from anything with Yeg on it. Anyway, we're going to go straight into comics here, and we're going right. to start with Tom. Uh, I got two from Marvel, one from DC, and then one from... What company is this? It is American Mythology. That's a new one for Which us, is, yeah, it? I'll, it's a, I'll get to that one. Cool. I'll save that for last. Cool. That, that was a favorite. Uh, but I'm going to open things with Marvel, and the first issue of the Star Wars Darth Maul miniseries just came out. And as I think everybody can agree on, the prequels were left a lot to be desired. Mm -hmm. But one of the coolest things to come out of them was Darth Maul, even though he gets chumped at the end of Episode One, He was still, like, awesome. double blade lightsaber, the red skin, and the horns, everything was awesome. But he has, I think, literally two lines of dialogue tops. And so it's always been kind of like what if stories or, you know, other non canon yeah. things they've done up until the Clone Wars where they brought him back and he was awesome. Yeah, and that was where they really did a great job fixing him in that. Yeah. And we've talked about that a bunch of times. That everybody wanted more Darth Maul. Yeah. So And this series actually doesn't take place post uh, Clone Wars or anything. It's actually leading up to episode one. Cool. This is his history we're getting. And that's great, because like I said in episode one, he's just kind of like the attack dog for Palpatine. You know, he points him in a direction, Darth Maul goes off and kills stuff. Yeah. But here we really get to see him fleshed out as a character. Uh, they actually do a fun nod to The Force Awakens in here. It opens with him killing, you remember the giant ball things Han Solo was transporting? The uh, evil tentacle... Oh, I love that thing. Yeah, yeah. the Rathars. <laughs> it opens up with him killing some Rathars. I'm like, crazy oh. Thing. Yeah, it's a fun... War! <laughs> Let's and, run uh, up and down the halls. The basic gist of it is Darth Maul has been trained basically his entire life to kill the Jedi. Yep. But Sidious won't let him kill the Jedi. Sidious was playing the long game. And Darth Maul is getting increasingly frustrated about that. Mm -hmm. And he wants to let, you know, get things started and go after the Jedi in the open. And so really it's kind of interesting because we never got any real sense of friction between him and Palpatine. Yeah. Darth Maul was just kind of like, yes, master, okay, blah, blah, blah. And he'll go off and do whatever mm -hmm. he wants. Here we get the sense that well, he still clearly obeys Sidious, that there really is that Sith tension under Sith there tension. of when am I going to finally get to off you and do what I want. Right. When isn't there? With yeah. Sith, <laughs> yeah. Which is why they all wiped each other out in the beginning. So, uh, so it's fun. It's, uh, it's, I don't want to give too much away, but we do get to see some more of the world pre, you know, uh, episode one where it all just eventually, you know, the whole galaxy goes cool. to hell in a handbasket because awesome. of the whole thing. But. Uh, I think this is only going to be a five-issue miniseries, but I'm really looking forward to it. Darth Maul is one of my favorite villains of all time, and it's nice to see him get a little bit of a story expansion. Cool. And now that this is Marvel doing this, and Marvel and Disney are owned by the same people, this is canon. This is not a legend storyline. This is official uh, Star Wars-related uh, story here. Maybe we'll just get a movie in about 2023. 20, yeah, maybe. I would love a Darth Maul movie, honestly. Uh, and the other uh, Marvel comic I got for you is another five-issue miniseries that just started up, Bullseye. Uh, Bullseye just recently re-emerged in the Daredevil main storyline, and they were initially t pitching this, I got the impression anyway, that Bullseye was going to get his own comic, like a, a monthly ongoing series, but then eventually that got changed into a uh, five-issue miniseries. I was a little bummed, because Bullseye... Is maybe not the most interesting of characters. He is kind of evil for evil's sake, mm -hmm. but as I'll get to here, he does have some absolutely fantastic moments cool. in his issue. Uh, it starts off with a little bit of comic hilarity because it acknowledges that Bullseye's been killed and brought back and seemed to have gone missing. And you know, yeah. you know who doesn't stay dead in comics yeah. anyway? But uh, it, it opens with a fun little tongue in cheek. He goes after a guy, and the guy's like, "Are you dead?" He goes, "I don't know which time." <laughs> you know, so, yeah. um, but the basic premise is Bullseye's back. He's trying to reestablish himself as one of the premier hitmen in the world. Cool. And he's looking for new missions. And one of the best what scenes... What do you do to do that? You gotta go, like, hitmen.com and... No, he actually <laughs> has an agent. 
<laughs> That's the best. This is the best Looking scene. Looking for the, best hitman. Please apply here. This yeah. is the best scene in the whole comic. He actually goes to his basically his agent's office. Okay. And he's, he's talk- not an agent. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's he's talking to his agent. That's he's, awesome. He's looking out the window at the street, and he has paper clips in his hand, and his agent is listing jobs, and he's hucking paper clips out the window, going through like people's ears and killing them. <laughs> And he hits, like, a cab driver who goes off the road and kills, like, 12 people. And he's just doing... This car, this carnage is unfolding, and the agent has no idea outside oh the God. window. And, uh... That's awesome. It's just... Yeah, it's... it's Not for the poor cab driver. Not for the poor... Yeah, the poor, like, 20 people he just killed with paper clips. Um, it is... This is... Uh, for a main Marvel comic, there is a lot of blood and gore in this one. That and they even have a parental true. advisory right on the front yeah. cover. Uh, but it's fun. It's I'm kind of wondering if they're going to have him intersect with Daredevil at any point during this miniseries, but I'm fine with it really just being a, a bullseye, uh, you know, out there in the world looking for missions to kind of whack unfortunate people. Cool. <laughs> so I would definitely say check this one out. That agent scene is hilarious, and you have to see it to believe it. Um, they should have put the... Well, that was a different a different group of... Action, of, of people but they almost you can see the cast of powerless like cleaning that mess up yeah. <laughs> even though it's dc and marvel but it's, it's well there's in the marvel universe that would be damage control damage control yeah, yeah. can you imagine walking to that scene and like what happened to him? 20 people dead paper clips, paper clips. Uh, yeah okay that's awesome uh and on the other side of the fence with dc we have superman number 16 which is kind cool. of the wrap-up to that i think they were calling it the multiplicity storyline where superman is running into other universes of himself to try to stop a villain named prophecy who is, for some reason, uh, killing Superman and draining them of their powers. All right. And we get a little bit of clarity on why Prophecy is doing this. He, Prophecy allegedly thinks that there's some universe-ending cataclysm coming, and only if he absorbs all the power of every universe of Superman will he have the power to stop it. And so there's some great... Like I said, this has a lot of fun nods to other universes that happened. There's a Batman Beyond Superman in there. We see Superman from Red Sun earlier. It's, it's just a lot of fun little winks and nods to cool. other storylines. But it does further an interesting storyline that's not just been going on within Superman, but even a little bit in Detective Comics, of there's this mysterious puppet master behind the scenes who's yanking people out of existence for his own ends. For his own ends. Okay. Yeah, and it happened in Detective Comics with Tim Drake. Everyone thinks he's dead, but really this guy got a hold of him. Okay. And I was it was interesting because initially it was a Superman thing and then it crossed over into Batman, so I get the sense that this might become a big crossover event that this whoever this villain is is going to wind up having the whole, you know, the whole Justice League or whatever going after him. But uh, this was a fun wrap up. We got some interaction between Superman and the new Chinese Superman Keenan Kong who absorbed the powers of the one that's dead. And is has his own series, uh, so it looks like the multiplicity storyline's over. But I enjoyed it. It was a quick three issue thing, but it was a lot of fun winks and nods to past Superman stuff. And like it does set up, like I said, something seemingly big down the line. Cool. Looks like it's in the pipeline. Cool. And my last one is uh, Equilibrium issue two. I forgot to cover Equilibrium issue one when it first came out. Uh, Equilibrium was a kind of dystopian sci fi movie in two thousand two. If you haven't seen it, it's fantastic. Christian Bale plays John Preston. And in this world, uh, it's determined that the real cause of war is people's lack of self-control and emotional instability. So a drug is developed called prosium that suppresses all emotion. Okay. And so you kind of get like this Orwellian future where everyone does what Big Brother says and everyone watches you all the time. You're all taking Soma. And they're all, yeah, they're all just taking yeah. Super Valium, basically. And they have no human emotion. And if you are found to be not taking your prosium and have you know you're feeling things they kill you dead and the movie takes place because through a a series of happenstance john preston begins to feel emotion again he misses his supply of prosium and gets thrown into this world with the resistance and have to go with it and it's a fantastic movie it's a great story Mm -hmm. fantastic action film uh it remains one of my favorite movies to go to of all time and it's funny because when it wrapped up i didn't really think there was any need for a sequel Mm -hmm. they they kind of left it with a satisfying ending so when i saw a comic i thought it was probably just going to be a story set within the same universe during the same time but this is actually a direct sequel all these years later and it's keep going no uh, i'm I'm sorry um, i was looking at something while you were saying that because it just it just struck me but and um the authority, the Tetragrammaton clerics, have barely managed to regain control of the city after uh, John Preston's uprising with the resistance. Okay. 
but now there's instability. There's not enough prosium to go around, so only the main block of the city has it, and the outskirts have basically devolved into, like, New Orleans on steroids, where it's, like, you know, gambling everywhere. Because yeah. they explain it within the thing. It's, like, after being numb for so long, when everybody's emotions kick back in, it's, like, on hyperdrive. They want to have They're fun. All, yeah. And so there's a new cleric who's trying to finish what John Preston started, and he's looking for him. Cool. And so this picks up all these years later, and it goes from there. And we're two issues in. I don't think this is a mini. I think it's going to be a mini series, but it's absolutely fantastic if you uh, love the original movie. No, and, and uh, two two quick notes on that. I'm looking at the cover, which we will have a link to on on here, and it's really neat art. It's a little bit different than you usually see. Yeah, it's, I don't know what they did there, but I really like the colors, and I like what it's they a did really with that interesting art. palette design. Yeah, really nice, uh, really nice cover on that. And also, uh, while you were saying that, when he ran out of the the drug and then he started to change, there's a comic that I we covered a while back called um, uh, the, the, the Power Nap. And Power Nap is supposed to be one of the biggest online comics going, from what I've heard. I've read it, and I'm, I'll be covering it again, because it's been a little slow there. I, I haven't covered it in a while, because they haven't put a whole lot up in the last month or so, or two months. But it's the same kind of idea. They, they There was a drug, and I, if I remember correctly, there was somebody ran out, or they didn't take their drug or something, and things start start changing. But great comic either way. I think that, that Soma idea is a great... A great um, a great thread that goes through a bunch of comics. So I was just like, when you did that, I, I didn't mean to cut your short. Okay. I was just like, hey, I remember Power Nap here. So, so you got we got Equilibrium, and we're on issue two, two on that. Yep. So we expect is this going to be a, a uh, short one or yeah, I think it's going to be a mini series. Okay, yeah, they're not going to continue a storyline like an arc to go. Uh, I don't and... think so. I think the uh, writer t- said that this was a mini series. He had an idea for okay, and he said he's got more, but That'll he said fun. we'll see how they do with this one before we go cool. on with it. But I, I loved it. Okay. What do we got next? We got. Uh, uh, I got my TV stuff. TV. Uh, I got. I watched again Arrow, Legend of Tomorrow, and Flash. Cool. Uh, Legend of Tomorrow, it's still firing on all cylinders. This show is absolutely fantastic. After that fantastic uh, George Lucas, you know, movie Easter egg filled episode, we went on to the Legion of Doom. That was actually the title of the episode as well. Okay. And they were the main focus of the episode, and we really got some awesome. Uh, backstory and banter between all three of them and though the legends were in this episode it really was a Legion of Doom episode to start with Uh, Rip has been unfortunately lost to their clutches and they're trying to torture information out of him to obtain the Spear of Destiny. Cool. Unfortunately for them Rip's brain is a pile of mush and he (laughs) really genuinely believes he's a hippie from 1967. That's awesome. You know uh so they're trying to torture information out of a guy who doesn't have the information. And all they're getting is a soundtrack to the Age of Aquarius. Yeah. And uh, throughout the episode, or the early parts of it, the reverse Flash keeps having to disappear. He a watch His watch goes off, and he takes off and basically barks orders at them, at uh, Malcolm Merlin and Damian Dark, right. and takes off. And even eventually, they, the two of them start to wonder, what's going on here? Okay. Clearly, there's... <laughs> really something going on that every we time don't somebody need to. runs away in that series it's all oh, yeah. trouble and it's great because even though he's a burned out hippie now rip still manages to kind of get under their skin yep and he says do you really think he needs you you're his henchman you're his lackeys he sends you to go do something and you do it mm-hmm. and look at all the power he has why does he even need you and Damien Dark finally looks at Malcolm and goes, why does he need us? Yeah. He's a time-traveling speedster mm-hmm. why can't he just go back and fix whatever he wants to fix on his own? Meanwhile, the legends uh, are trying to figure out who the speedster is. They don't think it's Reverse Flash because Reverse Flash should be dead. Because, you know, before Barry mucked up the timeline. Yeah. And which so one? they're, they're which, li- t- which time? Yeah, they're <laughs> listing all the speedsters they know about, like trajectory from her episode in Flash is yeah, in there. That's right. yep. yep. And finally, Professor Stein puts two and two together. Do that it's it? it's Eobard Thawn. Okay. Yep. And but the, like I said, that's the minor part of the storyline. Really, the Legion gets to shine here. And the Legion finally tracks down a clue about the Spear of Destiny. And But Malcolm and Damien have hatched their own little scheme to get to the bottom of why Damien Dar... or why uh, Eobard Thawn really needs them. Okay. They trap him in a vault with that the Spear is allegedly in. It's not. But they, they trap him in there with him, and they say, you're going to give us answers, or we're just going to wait here and see what that watch of yours is all about. <laughs> and he starts freaking out, and he says, fine, you really want to know the truth? I'll tell you the truth. Uh, Flash captured me, locked me up, screwed up the timeline, and when he put or when we set things right, something started chasing me. 
I don't know what it was. I thought it was a time wraith because I, you know, I was traveling through time, but it's not. And I don't, I won't give away what it is. But anyone who saw the season two finale of Flash yep. might have a pretty good idea. A pretty good idea what it is. What's chasing him? Yep. And Big nasty. The episode ends with Rip traveling back through time again. His accent's back. He's British again. Yep. And it looks like the League may have done something to him to basically cool. create a sleeper agent in him. Uh, and so this show was fantastic. Cool. I really can't believe that after that rocky first season, this show has just taken off in For terms legends. of quality. Great. It's great. Um, moving on to Flash. It was another episode where the main character of the show actually kind of took a back seat. In, this was really a Cisco-heavy episode. And... H.R. Uh, Wells, who's this season's Harrison Wells, who Tom Cavanaugh continues to have to play different characters every season, yeah. and it's great. Um, and he does it so well, too. He, yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, they all do. Like we said before, those guys are great. They, what a great bunch of people they got oh, yeah. on that show. And, but it turns out, in the universe that he's from, uh, hopping between worlds is a criminal offense, because oh. they were invaded by another planet, by another universe. So he gets tracked down by basically his universe of Cisco, Gypsy. And she's supposed to bring him back to their universe where he will face judgment. Yep. And Barry's at first kind of like, okay, what, are you going to throw him in jail? He's got to pay a fine. She goes, no, we're going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> so Cisco, not realizing that or, uh, HR mentions the only way out of it would be trial by combat. And before HR can stop him, Cisco says, I'll fight you for him. Sure enough. And she says, fine, but you realize it's to the death. And poor Cisco did not realize that it was to the death. <laughs> He's always getting lured in. Yeah. Poor Cisco. Uh, so we get some funny training montages of Cisco trying to use his powers and you know and just failing miserably. Mm -hmm. And Wally, meanwhile, is really starting to step up in terms of being a superhero. Flat. Great. He's really starting to get stretch into the Kid limelight. Flash, Kid yeah. Flash is coming into his own. Great. So really, it was all, Barry kind of took a back seat in this episode, and it was fine. It wasn't like the episode suffered because of it. It was really nice yeah. to get to see Wally and Cisco shine. I can see that though in the comic too. They had to stress out with somebody at Kid Flash. And oh, yeah. some other stuff, and they have to they have to get the other guys up there in the front too. Even though Barry's everybody's gonna go to see Barry, and we'll see a heck of a lot more of it. So anyway, Kid Flash steps up. Yeah, Kid Flash starting Kid to step Flash up. Is, Barry's hot. training him. Uh, Cisco is trying to desperately figure out any way to beat Gypsy. <laughs> to win this fight. Uh, their fight is a little brief. I was kind of, it was actually kind of an anticlimactic fight. It was only probably three minutes tops. Okay. But we do get some funny, uh, moments in there. They actually start fighting between universes, and they pop up in Supergirl's universe for a ah. minute. And, um, but the, really, for Barry, the, the most of the episode was him trying to help Iris deal with the fact that Savitar might just offer in five months. And it was great because that was one thing I thought they kind of swept under the rug too quickly was Iris just like, oh, okay, I guess in five months or so I'm going to get I'm killed dead. by a speed god demon yeah. thing. And this episode was good. She was really starting to deal with that kind of, imp like the sword hanging over her head yep. kind of. And so there was, we got a little bit of everything. We got some great actions. There was always some good humor in Flash. And we got some character drama with Barry and Iris. And cool. like I said, Relationships in shows or movies either bring them down or they are a really strong part of it. And Barry and Iris, especially this season, has been a very strong component a good one, yeah. of the Flash. Uh, so better than their return episode from their, uh, I guess, fall hiatus kind of deal. Yep. Uh, but still, I don't know. I felt like it was missing a little bit of something. Uh, maybe if Cisco had gotten a little bit more of a actual brawl in there with Gypsy instead of just kind of a little... We're only we're only on uh, number two, though, right? So we're, we've we got plenty of time to go, and they're, they're building. I think they're oh, yeah. building for they're something building. big. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward. Like, it's, there's, what are we, 10, 11 episodes in out of a 23-episode season? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Savitar's still got a long way to go before we, we deal with that. Wait, are we that... We are that far. Yep. Okay, I'm well, sorry. Yeah, I said two, uh, I'm thinking... Well, two back from hiatus, yeah. Yeah, two back from hiatus. So. Um, but that was it's still a good, a very good solid episode of Flash. All right. And on to Arrow. Sure. Which, again, still can't believe that they pulled it off. Season 5 coming out. Um, season f their, season 5 has been a lot about Oliver trying to deal with Laurel's death in Season 4 and a way to honor her. And he started that by getting a new team back together with uh, Mr. Terrific, Ragman, cool. uh, Artemis, and Wild Dog. But he was very clear that no one was going to be the new Black Canary at first. <laughs> And eventually Felicity kind of warmed down and he says, if you, she said, if you really want to honor Laurel, you got to get another Black Canary back in there in the mix as well. 
So the episode begins with him just shooting down everybody's, you know, propositions for who the next Black Canary should be. And until Curtis finally comes up with a possible solution. There's urban legends of a woman who's got the same canary yell that the Earth 2 Laurel had yep. that, you know, actually like a superpower, not just the collar that yep. Laurel wore. And Oliver takes Curtis and Wild Dog along to check it out. So the main bulk of the episode is the, t- the three of them trying to recruit her into the team. Okay. But Felicity got some stuff to do this week in terms of trying to hack into uh, the NSA and prove that Diggle's being framed for a crime he didn't commit, yeah. which is pretty much what Diggle's been on the sidelines a lot of the season for uh, because of it. And so Felicity got some chunk or uh, some real meaty story stuff to do with because she really kind of has been uh, just the sidekick really for right. Oliver and the team for a while. And she used to be this big hacker who was you know taking down corrupt government officials and. She was a big deal in the hacking community. And so we kind of get the hint that maybe she wants to get back into that. And, well, obviously she hasn't approached it with Oliver and the rest of the team yet, but we'll have to see how that goes over. Um, But they did introduce the character of Dinah Drake, who is uh, one of the various Black Canaries in the comic universe. Cool. And I gotta say, they did a great job of building her up as a real character, and she doesn't feel like okay, Laurel's dead, we need to conveniently shoehorn in somebody to be Black Canary. Uh, They had a great uh, origin story for her powers. It was because of that particle accelerator that gave everybody superpowers. (laughs) Yep. Uh, Although I think other than Barry, she's like the only one to not turn evil. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh, Cisco. Yeah, everybody okay. turned evil. I yeah. noticed that. that Barry makes... and Cisco and her are the only three to not turn evil. I was because thinking about that. Like other... all through the first couple of seasons, I'm like, why did nobody turn good here? Everybody's like, yeah. oh, I got superpowers. I think I'll just start killing everybody. They were, like, oh, they were either criminals already, or the powers made them yeah. crazy, or you know, it's like, come on, can we get like a fifty-fifty split here of like heroes to bad guys? But it's awesome. <laughs> Except for the only the only exception I can think of is Grog, who uh, Grog, who was um. Oh he yeah, seemed to kind of do his own little thing there. Yeah, he, he was he. You know, I don't know the background of Grodd. What is his background? Uh, it, de- on it depends on some comics. Grodd is from Gorilla City, where gorillas Grodd. just naturally yeah. evolved okay. into being hyper intelligent beings. In some, he is the product of an experiment by Argus, and which yeah, kind of like what they did in the, t- the TV show. Yeah, that's what if they were going to bring him because I saw a bunch of stuff on Grodd recently, and I was like, I wonder because he's. Gr- they said Grodd thing. is going to be back for yeah. season three. Um, but, so yeah, Dinah Drake got her powers in the particle accelerator, mm-hmm. accelerator accident, and she's been hell-bent on getting the crew that killed her partner <laughs> slash boyfriend. <laughs> so we get a little bit of classic really? Oliver revenge yep. story in here. Yep. Um, and so th- that was a fun present-day storyline, but the flashback was the interesting stuff. Okay. Last week, they dropped a huge bombshell. They did it in Legends. They introduced the concept of Talia al Ghul. Who is Ra's yeah. Ghul's daughter? Yeah, I saw that. And cool. anyone who's a Batman fan knows Talia Al Ghul is like Bruce Wayne's, you know, the love of his life, but they can't really be together because her dad's a mass murdering psychopath. Uh. Um, so they always kind of hesitated away from using Batman characters because Batman and Superman are, you know, DC's big cash cows, yep. and that's what the movies are for. But the introduction of Talia on Legends was big. You're like, oh, okay, she's like officially in this mm. universe now. And in the previous episode of Arrow, the the finale shot we get is Oliver getting saved in Russia by Talia al Ghul. Ah. And now it looks like Talia is going to basically train Oliver a little bit, too. So this is a big deal. This is a heavy-duty Batman character getting brought into the TV universe. And obviously it doesn't mean, like, Bruce Wayne's running around or anything. But it's it's still a big nod towards the Batman universe. Maybe we'll get a little... uh, uh Batman view for you know maybe it's possible little, it's they've always kind of fun. shirked around it though they, I yeah. mean in Flash they had a fun uh, nod to it by saying Queen consolidated merged with Wayne Tech yeah so I mean they've they're, like I said there's been these little nods to Batman and Superman here and there but no real direct overt references well, like you said they're, they're saving it. that for the yeah. big stuff that's Cash Cow Superman Batman Wonder Woman that kind of thing they're gonna they're gonna go heavy on on the movies there I didn't mean go ahead no it's, it's it's that's true that's exactly why they're doing it so overall another really great episode for Arrow we got some uh, great team building yeah. with Oliver in the present the Talia stuff was good in the past and it Felicity is really getting some of her own storyline time to shine which is good because she has been kind of a little bit on the sidelines this yep. season, but it looks like they're going to be doing some stuff with her soon, too. Cool. 
and then maybe more Diggles later on. Or, yeah, that's Diggles all. Or Diggles? Dig, I, Diggle. Diggle. Yeah, you know, I keep saying that. I've Diggles. watched this enough. That and needs I, to be a fun little T-shirt for him now. There's something. <laughs> there's a there's a podcast I listen to, and in the pod, podcast, there's somebody who's who's known as is Biggles, and this uh. is Diggles. And so I'm like, I keep re- getting those two mixed up. So I apologize. I should know that Diggles. And I, I like Diggles, and I'd like to... Is he on another show or doing something? Is that why he's on? Uh, right I don't... It would kind of make sense. I wonder if he's filming something, because that's usually because what Because he has do. been MIA... Not MIA, he's in every episode, but he's, like, yeah. in two scenes in a prison cell. I liked his know, character, too. He was pretty good. Yeah, he's always been a great yeah. character. He's been a nice foil for Oliver. You know, and like I voice of sanity. On, yeah, on, yeah. <laughs> when Oliver's like, I'm going to go murder people, he's yeah. like, mm, maybe, maybe we ought to talk this that. out. <laughs> but hopefully uh, he gets back into the swing of things full-time soon. Okay. And that's all I got for my DC TV stuff. Now, I did watch uh, Netflix had a new show come out, The Santa Clarita Diet. Oh, God. It's a zombie comedy. Yep. With uh, and Drew, Drew, Drew Barrymore. Barrymore and Timothy Oliphant. Yep. And I saw the trailer for this and said, if this is even half as funny as it looks in the trailer, it's going to be worth watching. Okay. Turns out it wasn't half as funny. Oh, it no. was like 10 times as oh, funny. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, I love this good. show. I was very surprised. Uh, it's, it, how do you take a show about cannibalism and make, and make it, it funny? funny? And that's, the, that's the, yeah. really what you think. Well, Shaun of the Dead yeah. in, in 05 was a similar hilarious yeah. zombie comedy. And this thing is absolutely hilarious. Drew Barrymore and Timothy Oliphant play realtors who, while showing a house, Drew Barrymore becomes violently ill, throwing up, like, exorcist-level uh. stuff. It's awful. Ugh. And then as the time progresses, they come to realize she's dead. But oh. she's still up and walking around. She's the zombie. That's right. And so it's them struggling to adjust to her new circumstance in life, trying yep. to cover up, you know, all the stuff that's going wrong. And it, I don't want to give anything away because yeah, the show is much. absolutely hilarious. I, I watched the entire season in a single day. It's a half hour episode. So yep. There's only ten. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. I'm liking that, by the way. A lot yeah, of these yeah. shows are going to smaller and smaller episodes, which is not like an attention span thing. It's just they're, they're writing so well, they're able to jam a lot in a little Yeah, no filler, no crap. Yeah. Just, let's get all this out Great of the way. Stuff. Great stuff. And uh, so, yeah, 10 episodes of half hour, uh, half hour length. They're hilarious. Right. Not a bad episode of The Bunch. Uh, they ended it with obviously a cliffhanger because they intend for a season yeah. two. And I, God, I hope they get it because this show was fantastic. They, I've I've heard nothing but great things on this all over the media, all over the uh, the um, the social media, and even my friends who I text back and forth are all talking about this show. So I think it's going to be really hot, and it's it definitely going to get a second season. Oh yeah, imagine. I can't even not imagine. on Fox. Yeah. So it's safe. <laughs> you know, as long as it's oh, not no. there. Fox likes to do either no second season or we'll yeah. give you a second season so we build your hope up and then take it away. You, know, you think about thank God shows like Mash or anything were brought out on Fox or any yeah. other big one. Just you know, like, gone. Well, <laughs> Kingdom of Friends on Fox. Gone! Second season. You know, it didn't do quite as well as we thought it would. <laughs> it only made $600 billion this <laughs> week. Um, and on the other, like, last bit of TV news I got is uh, Runaways, which is going to be on Hulu. So, another streaming service getting there, a premium show out there. Um, basic cliff notes on Runaways is it's a Marvel comic. Okay. It's about a group of uh, young kids, teenagers who their parents meet up every year and they all hang out together and they kind of know each other. And then one day, at this yearly gathering, they accidentally stumble upon the fact that their parents are supervillains. Ah! And, like, not just supervillains, like, really well-known supervillains. Mm. And they also discover that in addition to this, some of them have, they've all inherited their parents' powers. And they're like, oh my, yeah, they're freaking out. They're like, our parents are evil, we've got their powers. What is and they just take off. They they leave. They steal their parents' stuff, <laughs> and they that's take awesome. off and decide to take care of each other. Great. And that's why they're, they're runaways. And this is going to be on Hulu. And they just announced the casting, and I forgot to write down the cast. But uh, I think it's an intriguing project. Yeah. I don't. It's be- a cool idea I too. I don't believe this is part of Marvel's main universe. I think this is one of their offshoot things. So we're not going to see any main. No, like I don't think there's any characters. major. I okay. never read the Runaways comic, so I'm I didn't not either. Sure. I, I, this kind of kind of came out out of left field for me but I, I like, do oh. know that everyone I've talked to who has read it says yeah. it's fantastic and they're really excited for this This is trending, and I think it sounds yeah. like a really cool premise for a TV show it's definitely trending like mad again on social media and the websites it's, I'm watching this and I'm seeing it's a lot of trending but I, I gotta admit I do nothing about this one I, I've not read it or anything so looking forward to hearing yeah I'm, I'm excited does. for that when that finally comes out cool again here we go we're going farther and farther down in the left, left field 
with all these these interesting side characters and side projects, which is really cool. And you and I talked about this weeks ago, and I think it's happening way faster than we thought it was. Oh going. yeah, I it's thought funny. it was gonna be like two or three Netflix, years, but it's like months later. I can't right? remember what the first Netflix original show was. But I'm like, really? Wow, Netflix is doing their own stuff? That's yeah. kind of weird. And then it just was like steamrolling it through stuff coming out and coming out and coming out. And then Amazon's like, we're going to do new stuff. And Hulu's like, we're going to have our... And it's like, wow. Well, okay. And, and it's interesting. Cause here, if I can just quick jump in here for sure. a second. Um, the CW now is looking at Black Lightning, which is yeah. another one that I had... I had no. I you know, I remember Black Lightning from the Super Friends cartoon, yeah. basically. But ever since then, yeah, you kind of dipped yeah. into obscurity. And so they're they're going into Black Lightning, and they're they're pretty serious about it, from what I hear. They're going to do it, and it could be cool. I I am always excited anytime you bring out old characters. And oh yeah, characters. Did, did, let's have, do it. Have they said is Black Lightning going to be part of like Flash and Arrow yeah. and all them? Let's is it going to be part of that shared universe? Or well, you would you would think so because although they say they got a very limited amount of time on the um, what's it called the prime the prime slot prime slots, prime yeah prime time. So they, they well, I mean they already time. have geez, they have shows Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Yeah, so, I mean this could be Friday, I guess. Well, but Friday, nobody wants to do Friday, yeah, because well. yeah, everybody goes out. Everyone goes out. But um, Sunday, I, I don't know what they got on Sunday, but but anyway, we'll see how this thing does. And it, it's yeah. a, it's a, it's cool because yet another um, uh, deep in the bench. Love this this term, but it's true. It's, we're going way down to the bench and, and pull, pulling all these guys out. And it's really neat. And so so uh, I don't even think we got time to write up new characters, new comics. We just got to yeah, they're just the old ones. It's it's always nice to. Say, I, I, I'm just trying to think about this as a comic writer. Yep. You know, you create this character, and he kind of does well for a while, and then he just disappears into obscurity. That's got to be kind of disheartening. Yep. So when a show like, you know, or when a network like CW picks up Black Lightning or something like that for a show, that's kind of got to be a little bit of nice validation here. Yeah. That he's getting some love finally after all this time. Yeah. So it's nice to see. I, I The more the merrier for me. I, I like it. Just keep bringing him in. It's funny and... because you'd think with all these shows, it's like... Eventually, you're going to hit the quantity versus quality conundrum where they got so many, someone's going to suffer, right now. But right, they've got four shows running right now. If five, if you count Vixen online, except for the fact that the writing is so good. That's what I, yeah, and that's what's that's what's saving these. Because back in not 15 years ago, the writing was awful. Even then, you'd get these shows and be like, oh god, here we go again. And, and they might have a couple episodes, and then they just spiral off into some kooky land or in in. And now the writing's got so good, it's gotten so good. I've heard people re- refer to this as the like the the TV revolution, you know, like the, the Renaissance golden age, of, yeah. Renaissance, the golden Renaissance yeah. of TV or TV Renaissance. And it's because they, and so all these shows are doing really well. So when you got Flash, Arrow, Legends, and Supergirl all shoulder to shoulder, all doing well, and everybody tra- and trending at the same time, that tells you how good. And the CW must just be loving life right oh, now. Oh yeah, so, they gotta be rolling in it right now. So they're, if they're looking at Black Lightning, I'm sure they're doing it very seriously, and they're thinking, hey, can we do this a fifth time? They probably can. So, yeah. So anyway, you got, um, I, I jumped on Black Lightning there while you were talking That's about the, the other thing, but I wanted to just drop that out there for people and see if uh, anybody, anybody wants to talk about Black, Light, 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 Black Lightning, feel free to comment because I don't know a heck of a lot about it and I have not done much research. Yeah, I haven't Black really Lightning. seen much of Black Lightning, like I said, since Super Runs in when I was, God, I must have mm-hmm. been six or seven. So it's it's been a while. Um, but that's all I got for TV stuff. Okay. I do have, there's a, actually some movie news though. Jump into movie, oh, you know, wait, before we go, I'm sorry. Sure, no. I got to jump into more TV. Um... Of course, this oh, was yeah. the Super Bowl, and this is the big trailers that are coming out, and the TV trailer, which is Netflix, which, and and I'm not going to give too much away here because Tom has well, no, I, it won't hurt you any. All I'm going to say is, the new Stranger Things season two promo dropped, and it's wow, it's it's so exciting, it's really cool, it looks just as awful as season one in terror and horror and it's just <laughs> darkness. And, and there's a lot of analysis going on back and forth. And I actually put up an article today where a guy on Forbes who wrote the, um, oh God, I wanted, he wrote a, a book about D&D. And I, darn it, I got to find it really quick here. It was, oh, I apologize. Here we go. He, uh, David M. Ewalt. Ewalt. And I apologize for mispronouncing oh, your Dyson name. Dyson Men. David, That's I'm sorry awesome. about that. If I did that to you, if I, <laughs> if I mispronounced your name, I didn't mean to. I'm going to say Ewalt. He's yeah. at Forbes, and he, he wrote a Dyson Men. That is the it's a D and D history. Book, or that's the book, best book title I've heard. Yeah, ever. Dyson Men. Love that title, and it's it's a D and D history, and and he's you know he's a big nerd like us, and he plays D and D, and so you know he was he goes way back to the day, and he had gone into the trailer and actually lar- enlarging the frames to take a look, and there's a spot where uh, uh, Will is is looking at or, or somebody's D and D books there, and the D is a drawing. Of this new creature that appears in Stranger Things 2. And 
behind it is an open D and D book, and just the corner, this David was able to pull all. He goes, "I know what that is. I know that page, and I know where it comes from." And he does this whole analysis on it. It's hysterical, <laughs> and it's from I think it's from Ravenloft. It is so cool. The way he, so he's got this whole theory that he's got. Where are we going with this? And he's you know it's possible, but my theory is a little different. I just just there's a scene in in this thing it's wicked cool and it's like an homage to close encounters it's where the kid one of the kids opens the door and something's going on uh, remember that scene yep. that, that bothered me when i saw close encounters years ago and i remember that scene where he, the little boy opens the door and everything's going crazy outside because the mothership has arrived or whatever it is and it's like oh that's creepy and it's the same kind of scene, except he's looking at the horizon and there's something hideous coming out of the sky. And it's totally Lovecraftian and, and totally awful. You're just waiting for Hellboy to show up and start <laughs> fighting it. It's that bad. So I'm really pumped about this. I think we're going to go in a Lovecraftian direction. I have no evidence other than that scene. But it looks like these guys might have been reading up on their Lovecraft. And maybe they'll have a mix of Lovecraft and D&D. So I'm really excited about it. And of course, I'm jumping up and down and going crazy because it's Stranger Things. And this is like one of my very favorite shows ever. I, I, I binge watched this in one afternoon. And the only problem is they're like, here it comes. And was like, when? Halloween. Like, what? <laughs> so everybody's going crazy. Like, I can't wait nine months for this thing. Oh, but they got it. Now. Eight months. Oh, eight no, months. actually, yeah. Nine it's months. It's a Halloween day. Yeah, Halloween. Oh, wow, yeah. So it's like, oh, yeah, it's nine man. nine months, basically. But if they do this on Halloween, that means many children will not be <laughs> trick-or-treating that night. I want to go, shut up, sit down. We're watching Stranger Things. So okay. dropping that on Halloween might not be the best idea. Maybe they want to drop it like the day before. They might want to rethink this because I know I'm not going to be anywhere on Halloween. If Stranger Things is out, if i got to give out candy, if anybody interrupts me during that There's show. Kit Kat, get Stupid out of here. kid. <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to wait for this. It's going to be really exciting. I just had to put that out there for, for Netflix. I'm really pumped about it. And, you know, we're big, big, I'm a big fan of Stranger Things. So we'll go right to the movies. We got, and, and Tom, you're going to go into a bunch of movies here. But on top of that... We've got all the major trailers that just Oh, yeah, dropped. the Super Bowl. Is just like, Super Bowl trailers. Just, it's like raining trailers right now. It's so cool. Because yeah. Here they come. So what are you going to go with first? Uh, well, first, a little bit of Batman news. Uh, ben Affleck has finally said he's out of directing um, Batman, the solo Batman movie that's going to come out. Uh, it was this whole big thing of, like, he's going to do it, then he's not going to do it, then he's going to do it, and he's not going to do it. And it looks like, yep. finally, this is he's not going to do it for the f- final time. Um the, uh, so there's some speculation as to why he doesn't want to do it. Uh, I have my own theory. It's It's got to be a real struggle when you're directing and starring in something to get the whole thing done. Okay. And he's done that a few times. He did that with The Town, which I thought was really good. He did it with Argo, which I haven't seen, but was also very well received. And then he just did it with his newest movie, uh, Live by Night. And Live by Night did not do well commercially. It did not do well critically. It was actually stated that Affleck was the worst part of the entire movie in oh, some reviews. Too bad. And that is really bad. And I think yeah. it's got to be a, a real stressor when you're directing this big, huge Hollywood budget movie and you're the main character yeah. in the big Hollywood budget movie. I don't even want to begin to fathom and, what that's got to be like. You know what sucks, too? And we're going to go back to this topic that you and I have been on a bunch of times. This is going to make you mad. Is I was reading this morning about someone saying, well, you know, Batman versus Superman, the critical. The, the critics didn't like it. You know, just the way they didn't like Suicide Squad, which also needs to get, you know, w- w- DC needs critical acclaim on one of their movies finally. And I'm like, wait a minute. Clearly, the critics were wrong about Suicide Squad. Well, Say what you thing. want, but that thing closing on a billion dollars. Cr- yeah, critical and, acclaim. And, both of them closed on a billion yeah, dollars almost. Yeah, a billion dollars. Yeah. So it's like the critics didn't like it, so it sucked. Well, I know yeah. a lot of fans do have problems with Batman versus Superman. I see a lot of fighting. And, uh, Suicide Squad too, but here's the thing. I haven't seen as much as Suicide Squad. No either. movie is going to be perfect. Yeah. And... Well, uh, Star Wars was... Star Wars. Okay. Star Wars was, was well, that's perfect. a whole other thing. That's not a movie. That's more like a <laughs> operatic saga. That's fantastic. Um, no, but... there. And the thing is, a lot of it's... It's not even the guys who make the movie's fault sometimes. Yeah. I, like I said, with Batman vs. Superman, the ultimate cut, which was a half hour longer, mm-hmm. makes that movie so right. much better. Because these guys are at the mercy of the of cutting the, room floor. Of the floor. cutting room floor. And the extended cut of Suicide Squad was better, I thought, but yeah. it not it didn't get vastly different of a movie than the, like Batman Superman did. But mm-hmm. it's it's not even a lot of the times the people involved in the movie's fault or this movie's so terribly written. Or this, you know why was yeah this we shot? don't know if it was the boardroom a bunch of suits yeah. sitting up there and some guy who doesn't know a damn thing about sometimes the movie. He's like, it's cut, very cut obvious. the scene out because I don't like it. You know I say don't look at a movie individually. Look at the director's body of work. Yeah, if everything they've done 
has those complaints, then it's probably them. Yeah. If it's a few movies here or there, I say it's kind of the studios. And, in and a, to to back you up on that, a good case would be starting out did really well. Uh, uh, Shia Laman, M Night. Oh yeah, took well, off. Here's the crazy like a, thing: like he's a back. And then he he crashed out for a while with those awful movies, and yeah. then he's back to number one again. He's, he's clearly, back. He's the like, last two he's done have yeah. been very well received: The and this, Visit and uh, uh, Split. The Split is supposed to be the, the I I, ju- I haven't seen it yet, but my friend uh, Brandon just yeah. told me it was fantastic. Yeah, people are going crazy for it. It looked good. It yeah, looked really. When I was looking at the trailers, I was like, "This looks really, really good." Even though I I don't so, think I can sit through it. It's yeah, scary. so it looks. Yeah, so I say. When it comes to movies, uh, let's be a little bit less judgmental yeah. right out of the gate. Um, but where were we going with this? We were, well, oh, Batman Superman. You were talking about Batman vs. <laughs> Superman. I, I, you know, yeah. Here you go, too. We, we go all over the place. That's what makes us fun. Um, but yeah, so Ben Affleck, I think, it's just the stress of directing and starring. So he bowed out yep. as director. Um, it, and there's been a couple names floated to replace him, but nothing concrete yet. But something that's interesting is the script, which he allegedly, yeah, we'll say allegedly, I'm pretty sure he flat out said he wrote the script. Yep. The script is being rewritten by the Batman vs. Superman screenwriter, Chris Terrio. So, I was a little nervous at first, but then I, I thought about it, and I'm like, the theatrical cut of Batman vs. Superman left some stuff to be desired. Mm-hmm. But the, the, the ultimate cut, the cut that Zack Snyder wanted to have you know, shown, was much better. So I'm, I was a little nervous at first when I heard that the guy who wrote Batman vs. Superman was rewriting this, but I'm going to let, let it play out because I think the guy just didn't get his movie on the screen. I think right. it got it shredded on the editing room floor. So I think I cautiously optimistic is what I will say about the rewrites that are happening okay. to the Batman movie. Uh, also, in the DC realm, DC actually does have uh, Aquaman has uh, actually quite a bit of news. Uh, it looks like Aquaman has also cast uh, Black Manta yeah. for the movie. And that's a pretty big deal because we already had Ocean Master in yeah. the movie. And Ocean Master, for non-comic readers, is... Well, actually, I don't know if I want to spoil that. But let's just say Ocean Master is an Aquaman villain with pretty strong ties to Aquaman himself. Right. And I thought they were going to go the way of Ocean Master was going to be the villain and save Black Manta for another yeah. day. Yeah. They could still be doing that and have Black Manta just kind of be ducktailed in there at the end, or it could be the opposite, where Black Manta is going to be the first villain out of the gate, and Ocean Master is going to be the one who will get the next movie. I can see them doing Black Manta because they they put Green Goblin in early on Spider Man, yeah. and that was a, a good idea, and it worked really yeah. well. Um, did you see also who's Aquaman's? I was just about to bring Mother. it up. Yeah, yeah oh, Aquaman's sorry. father has also been allegedly cast yep. as Tamura Morrison, yep. who everybody who's a Star Wars fan should know is Jango yep. Fett. Yep. And I who's love mom? that guy. Who's mom? Uh, who did, I didn't hear the mom. Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. Yeah, oh, she's my in this gosh. thing, too. So it's just crazy wow. casting. Yeah, it's, it's, Aquaman so, cast is like exploding yeah, out of nowhere. You can see somebody's writing checks on this, so they're clearly they, they want ready Aquaman to, get, to put yeah. money behind this. They're, they're going, okay, we want this as big as Wonder Woman, or, or bigger, you know, yeah. well, as big as Wonder Woman, let's say that. So it's really cool to see that they're writing, they're writing those kind of checks. Oh, yeah. I, I was super pumped when I started hearing about all this these yeah. casting news, because I think Aquaman is going to be the sleeper hit for DC. I think it's going to be a lot better than everyone expects. Because how many years has it gone on for? For like a long time. Someone's been trying time. to put this together, and you know, it's yeah. been like the butt of everybody's jokes, and they've got to come out swinging. So anyway, yeah, yeah. great, great casting news. Really excited about I Aquaman. Can't, yeah, I can't wait for that movie. We've been posting stuff on Aquaman more and more. See, that seems like they have some of the most news lately. Just Aquaman, like crazy. So. Oh yeah. And by the way, you can see um, there's a new photo of Aquaman that just popped out. Uh, Oh, it's him, Cyborg, and uh, yeah, the, yeah, and, and uh, I, I gotta put that up. I, 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 it's all over the place, and I, I generally won't do a whole post on just one photo unless it's a hell of a photo, and it's really just a few moments later of another photo. That they put <laughs> out, so. But if you but look around, you, I, I might nerds. We need everything. Yeah. We need to see every frame. <laughs> oh man, I don't want to see too much more yeah. trailers. Some of the trailers, and there was a big discussion. That's why online I'm actually kind of glad I missed the Super Bowl, is because I, you know, I like the trailers, but you give away too much in a trailer, and it kind of yeah. sucks all the fun out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I like. I actually like going in cold, which I can never do again. Now that I do this thing, but but it was fun going in cold at times when you could avoid all the trailers. I I think I told the story before, but I was in. I had avoided the Star Wars Force yep. Awakens trailers like the plague. Yeah, I would see Star Wars come up on my laptop, and I would slam my slam laptop, the laptop shut, shut, and I would just like avoid it. Yep. And what was I? At? I think I was at Avengers: Age of Ultron yep. or Sky. No, Skyfall. And you're trapped. Yeah, I was in Skyfall. 
and I and the you know the little da 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 the Star Wars theme starts, and I actually in my seat sat up and went no, <laughs> ruined. <laughs> Everybody pivoted and looked at yeah. Everyone just pivoted and looked at me like I was out of my mind. Oh, and I like God. I just kind of sunk back into my seat. Oh, that's funny. But uh, so what do we got next? We next got up on deck, uh, there's some casting rumors for Deadpool two. Cool. Obviously, they've been since Deadpool one's come out, they've been talking about how Cable was going to factor into the sequel, and. They kind of tongue in cheek joked at who Cable could be, Dolph Lundgren, you know, yada yada. Yeah. Uh, who actually I think would make a decent. I'd love cable. to see Dolph Lundgren in another big um, movie. So. But it looks like the rumor now is Pierce Brosnan, and I love Pierce Brosnan, but when I Cable is supposed to be this tall, humongous mountain of a guy who looks like he could rip your head off with yeah. his bare hands. And Brosnan's I don't, got a good physique, but he's not a he's mountain. He's not a mountain. He's tight. A guy. He's, you know, he's yeah, a, he's like he's a, a tight. He was James Bond. He, that's why he can wear yeah. suits like he does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone did some concept fan art of what he would look like as Cable, and he looked okay. But like I said, he, Cable is supposed to be huge. He's like almost yeah. as big as Colossus sometimes. And we'll I, see. I, I don't we'll know. See there, where that goes. There's been a bunch of casting choices for comic movies where you hear it at first and you think, "What?" Like yeah, Heath Ledger like as Brosnan, the Joker, but. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I would actually, like I said, Dolph Lundgren, I think Stephen Lang is Cable. Mm-hmm. I've said this since he started uh, jockeying for the role himself. And he, Stephen Lang has said he wants to be Cable. Yeah. And I think the guy could do it. But we'll see where they go with it. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't get that vibe from Brosnan, but we'll see. The wackier things have happened. Yeah. He could do it really well. I mean, he's a yeah. great actor, and we do like him, and he did great in James Bond, so we'll, we'll see. We'll yeah. see what happens with that. And my last bit of movie stuff I have is I was at our local uh, movie store, Soundgarden, downtown, and I was just kind of killing time, waiting for my bus, perusing stuff, and I was randomly having upon a movie, Death Race 2050. Uh-huh. Now, anybody who is a cult movie fan knows Death Race 2000. Yep. Roger Corman produced it. It was 1975, I want to say. Yeah. It is ridiculous. It is the best bad movie you'll ever Terrible. Know. It's awesome. Yeah. And that's the whole point of it. The it's old lady goes the street. Oh, Wham! Yeah. 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 Or the fake baby that turns out to be a bomb. Yeah. Um, the basic premise of Death Race is it's set in the future. Uh, the United States is being run by corporations. Yep. And in order to keep the populace entertained, they have this annual event called the Death Race. And it's, you know, five or six people. They start in New York, go to California. And along the way, you score points by killing pedestrians. Like the running man. Yeah, it's the, the running man, yeah, but with running, race cars. With race cars, yeah. Um, that's actually a really good way to put it, the yeah. running man with race cars. Uh, and it's just so dumb and over the top and, and hilarious. It's awesome. And they did a remake kind of in 2008 with Jason Statham, which was fun, but it lost a lot of that goofiness. Yeah. It really was more of a straight-up action movie. Um, so Death Race 2050, and I look at the cover, and the cover, and the poster for this thing, or the cover, might as well be 1975 Death yeah. Race. It was just so wacky and silly. I and noticed that too. It looked like kind of older. So. Oh yeah, it was. It was. I saw it, and I looked at it, and said, "I have to know. Yep. I have to. I have to know." So I bought it, and I went home, and I watched it, and wow, I had. The bar was kind of low here because yeah. it's Death Race. <laughs> and Roger Corman. And Roger, I love Roger Corman. No, no, but he's, he, but, that's what yeah. he does. He makes B movies. Yeah, you know? and so the bar was kind of low, but this thing, like Kentucky Show Horse, leapt over this bar. Great. It was exactly, it was Death Race, but yeah. with like modern effects and yep. stuff. Um, it's the same basic premise. The Death Race is an annual event. You run around, you score points by killing people. Um Malcolm McDowell plays the president of the United States. He's hilarious. <laughs> Manu Bennett plays Frankenstein. Anyone who's an Arrow fan, everybody knows this is fan. happening, and nobody gets off the streets. Yeah, no, that's, that's the, 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 it's, the it's, it's just it's so ridiculous. Oh, well, the death face is on. I think I'll go across the street and get myself a, a, a loaf of bread. Exactly. <laughs> yep. This thing was as zany and wacky, and it, it did have the same political overtones that the original one in '75 did too. So it really was. It was more of a remake than the 2008 one was, yeah. and it was fantastic. Uh, it, it's got some really bad effects in places, but again, that's kind of the whole point. As it should. Yeah, it's it's the it's a B movie on purpose. Yeah. And so if you're bored, and I bought it on Blu-ray, but if you're out there and you see it on Netflix or you see it at your local DVD store, and you're just looking for a fun movie, check out Death Race. We'll put a link up to it. We'll put a link up to it if you want to pick it up. If, and again, a great way to support the site if you if you click through our site and go to the Amazon thing and buy it through there, it gives us a penny. Yeah. So it's nice, uh, nice way to support the site. 
What have you got next after? Uh, uh, last things that I have through. actually is uh, just a couple chunks of video game news. Uh, the Star Wars Battlefront game that came out in 2015 yep. was kind of a mixed bag. Uh, it was beautiful to look at. The graphics on this thing were fantastic. Dice is never one to slouch on mm-hmm. the look of a game. But it kind of left a lot to be desired in terms of story and gameplay. I mean, in terms of story, there really wasn't one. It was just, yep. you drop into a fight, you're either the Rebels or the Imperials, and you kill stuff. You That's it. Things, so. Yeah, which is fine. I love that. And it was it's fun for a while, but after, it, it just kind of gets a little repetitive. Um, and you were locked into the Imperial era of Star Wars, where it's, you know, episodes A New Hope, yep. uh, Return of the Jedi, and uh, Empire. Yep. Uh, again, nothing wrong with that. Those are fantastic movies, but there's so much more to the yeah. Star Wars universe, and we all know that. So it was kind of, you know, a decent way to start the franchise again, but nothing to get really, you know, jump up and down and shoot, uh, you know, hoot and holler about. So the second game is coming out, and it looks like they're trying to rectify some of the real issues people had with the first one. They've said that this game is going to span across the multiple okay. eras of Star Wars. Cool. So, you know, they'll throw the Clone Wars era in there, you know, the Episode 1, 2, and 3, and uh, maybe even some stuff from Rogue One, now that that's out. Uh, so it, it looks like they're really trying to kind of, not, you know, apologize to the fans, but they're looking to shore up some Just of the weaknesses. Just want to make it better. Yeah, yeah, some of the weaknesses the first game had, which is great to hear, because I'm a huge Star Wars Battlefront fan. Um... So that was nice to see. Uh, now, the other last chunk of uh, news I have for video games is Injustice 2, which is swiftly approaching its May release date, which I cannot wait for. And Injustice 2 is the sequel to the fighting game Injustice Gods Among Us, yep. and they've been doing periodic character reveals. Uh, Bane is back, you know, Superman's back, Atrocitus is a new character, yep. yada, yada, and so on and so forth. But an interesting character just got dropped in, uh, Black Canary. Yep. And Black Canary... Which seemed like a logical choice. You know, Green Arrow's lo- big love interest. Uh, kind of actually a glaring omission from the first game, unless you read the comics that they did as the prequel to it. And in the prequel comics, Black Canary and Green Arrow are both killed off by Superman. Cool. But Injustice is a universe-hopping game, so this could just be Black Canary from a different universe, or, you know, the quote-unquote main DC universe. Um, everything about this game... Just looks fantastic. Yep. I can't wait. They've thrown in Dark Side as a pre order bonus, Reverse Flash as an alternate costume for Barry. Uh, it really looks like they're going above and beyond with all the, uh, you know, winks and nods to fans. And cool. they, they've said they want to make this game the biggest DC roster thing they've ever done. And I think they said Tuesday, which is tomorrow as we're recording this, should be the next character drops cool. for reveals. Uh, I am excited. We're three months out, and I am very excited for this thing. You'll be lined up at midnight yeah, to pick <laughs> this one up. Can I have it, please, the now? The midnight line. Have you, have you done that in a while, or no? No, the last thing I did... What was the last thing I did that for? Midnight. Uh, midnight, I think, might have been for my the PS4 launch. PS4 launch, yeah. Yeah, which was years ago. Years ago. I yeah. might... Do, if they if they have a new round of Nintendo Switch pre-orders, I will definitely do a midnight yeah. release for that, because I want that thing. I want to play Zelda. <laughs> I just saw some quick news too on that Nintendo Switch. Uh, 50, um, uh, Nintendo Switch just they just said there's a whole bunch of new games being being brought online. A ton of new games. Well, so, it's good because one of the criticisms the Wii U had when it came out was no real launch lineup. It had a couple really good games at launch, but it was a pretty dry in comparison to something like an Xbox yeah. or a PlayStation. And I'm a little, I'm kind of nervous here because I'm looking at the launch lineup right now and pretty much the only thing that I'm like salivating for is Zelda. Well, yeah. Everything else is kind of like, oh, that's cute. But If they know. can get Zelda off to a running start and then start dropping in some more big titles. And they've, okay, uh, but... they've, it comes out in March, yeah. uh, March 3rd, I believe. Very close. Uh, April is going to be the remake of Mario Kart 8 with yep. the new stuff in it, so that's fun. I like They're Mario Kart They're really pushing 8. that online. Yeah, Mario that's Kart 8 huge. Deluxe, which is good because Mario yeah. Kart 8 was fantastic, yeah, but it really it's just a remake of another game. I yeah. want I want something new. something new. And, I mean, a lot of the stuff they've showcased, like Splatoon 2 and ARMS, and they've announced the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 game, so, I mean, it's not like they don't have stuff yeah. in the pipeline, but we're not really too sure <laughs> how soon after launch it's all going to drop. And I really don't want to buy a console... And, and get sitting one there. game. Yeah, one game. So <laughs> they got a haul on that, and I'm sure yeah. they know that. And I, I'm, I'm kind of hopeful that we, you know, we've got uh, a month basically before it, it drops. So hopefully, in a week or two, they announce a couple other launch titles coming out for it. 
What else have you got on your list? Anything else? Uh, that's that, actually that, all that I've got this week. It? We got one quick book we're going to cover, which I have been reading forever, and uh, it's it's um, uh, the Alien Omni. Am I saying this right? Omnibus trilogy. Yep. That Tom got me, and uh, got me a while back, but I've been slowly plowing my way through <laughs> about eight hundred pages. And I've been trying to get the darn thing done. I love it. It, it was a good book. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not gonna spend a real lot of time re- reviewing it. I'm just gonna say, if you like aliens, you'll like this book. So there's parts in it that are a little wacky, but um, you know, so over the top. And uh, but it's it's a typical alien book. Anytime you get into an <laughs> alien story of any kind, they all make friends it's and gonna be dark and it's gonna be ride off into the sunset together. <laughs> without giving too much away, there's a lot of points where. It, all the people lose. <laughs> <laughs> Aliens can't be stopped very well. But um, I, I put a pretty, well, I hope it was a pretty detailed uh, review up for this book online. I'll have a link to it here. And um, it has a, a lot of action, a lot of action, a lot of aliens running around, and a lot of stress on the queens this time. And it has three different books. It's uh, Earth Hive, Nightmare Asylum, and The Female War, all by Steve Perry. And it's The Complete Aliens Omnibus, Volume 1. So we even have more coming, and uh, I I liked I liked a lot of it. I, there was a, quite a few things I liked, and um, that being the high action, the, the 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 focus on the queens, and it's this typical alien story. You've got there's always somebody or a corporation or a group <laughs> who thinks they can control it, and they're like, well, we'll just bring one in, Why and we'll get not? it, yeah. we'll either militarize it or we'll use it for a bio weapon or we'll use it for bio experiments or whatever and they, you know somebody somewhere screws something up they you know? actually did a really good i guess it's kind of a what if storyline where the corporation finally gets its hands on one yep. you know after all this fussing around and trying they finally get one uh unfortunately it's already like earth is already in the middle of an outbreak of aliens yeah. when they finally get it but they they mess with it genetically and instead of a queen they actually create a king ah to, to fight the queens cool but they make the stupid thing too big and dumb, and it gets destroyed by the queens in the fight. But it was like, that was it? You finally get yeah. your hands on one, and you make it, and it dies in That's 30 funny. seconds? <laughs> well, this is the opposite. This one has the queens, and the queens are super intelligent. And they yeah. get, what, what begins to get out of control here, I, I don't want to give too much away, but of course it's, it's they bring one back to Earth. And there's a cult that worships somehow them. worships them. And I forget if it's the, the telepathy. There's a lot of tel- telepathy. Well, that's, you got to figure that's how the queens con- control yeah. the hives. They control the hive with telepathy, but they also are able to get in touch with humans. And what's, what's kind of yeah. interesting here is that they're they're kind of controlling people. And and the queens, as these things are breeding, they're getting smarter and smarter really fast. So we we finally get out of the dumb alien phase. Well, and they've always kind of flirted with how intelligent these things are. I mean, the one in the first movie, I was obviously smart enough to hide, and used, it was, you know, I had the cunning of an animal. Yeah. And then in two, we get the queen, who the queen clearly has basic reasoning when, you know, Ripley points the flamethrower at the egg, yeah. the queen, you know, realizes... Or chases her up the elevator yeah. or whatever, so... So, they've always kind of flirted with the queen, the mm-hmm. aliens, you know, developing some semblance of intelligence, mm-hmm. you know, so it's kind of nice to see them well, move beyond the dumb... Well, that's what they do here. They, they've got fairly smart alien queens. The aliens themselves are still drones. They're still well, yeah, that would fake, that would They keep them dumb, but there's a ton of them. And there's, there's a lot. And of course, you know, there's the, the I don't want to give too much away in the book. There's a lot written there. If, if you read the, um, the review I put together, it's, 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 it's got a lot of, of course, I'm going to give away everything on there. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it's, it's funny because it's, a, it's, a lot of great ideas you put they, they try to get away and oops there's an alien on the ship and you know at one point and then there's it, I feel like one of them always just inevitably like just kind of wanders its way into the ship the heroes always yeah. inevitably take the, the trick is anytime <laughs> a ship gets within I'd say 20 meters of a planet with an alien on it it's toast yeah, forget it's, it it's, the, gone. it's gonna have an alien stuck to it yeah. and there's nothing you can do about it and they oh remember just, that in the first movie the yeah. thing she's blowing up the ship and she's like ah I got away and it's it it's latched sitting, to the edge. It's, it's like, sitting in the... Like, come on! Ship. That was the worst. <laughs> she must have been so bummed. She's like, and we're not even reviewing the book here. We're just having fun with the movies. Yeah. But you blow up the whole damn ship and turn around and sit on a little tiny thing. Oh, by the way, they do that in here. Nuke it from orbit? Very, yes. It's one of the funny <laughs> things they do. It, actually, in the first book, they I think Steve Perry actually paid a little a little um, tribute to that because somebody actually says that. They, they're talking about... We should nuke it from orbit because it's the only way to be sure. And um, I was laughing. I said, there, "There's the actual line." And um, long story short, there's the first book is is the aliens getting out of control. We're going to call it Earth Hive for a reason. And the second book, 
they um, they manage to escape, but they wind up um, our our heroes wind up um, in the clutches of a mad general, which is you know now the military aspect. Because the first one's like the corporate aspect getting out of control. The second one's a military aspect getting out of control, and the third one is the um, uh, I don't want to give again I don't want to give too much away here, but they're they're working from um, the Earth's moon. And the the alien queen, the queen of all queens, contacts them tele- telepathically, and so it's kind of cool. They're 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 trying to um, find a way to, to rescue people and, and do things, and they have to actually get the queen and bring her to get the other aliens out of the way. But sometimes you get a little confused on what's happening. Um, there's a, there's it, it, one of the things they do do here too is they bring Ripley in, and they bring Ripley what? into this 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 series of books. And I'm not going to tell you how okay. she does appear, and there's a huge, huge plot twist on Ripley on this one. So you're going to be like, wait a minute, Ripley's in this? And then you're going to be like, oh, this is cool. And then you're going to read it, and you're going to say, ah, I see what's going on here. So, I, Again, I don't want to give too much away online, but three books will keep you busy for a while. Kept me busy for weeks reading the things. I kept, I kept trying to read them at the end of the day, and I kept falling asleep. Not that it was a bad book. It's just I kept falling asleep. So... Um, so uh, if they're good books. Eight hundred. This one's eight hundred pages. Three books in one. Have fun reading it. We'll put a link up to it, and you can see the actual the whole review. So I got that out of the way. And coming up on deck is the Hyperion series, which I'm reading, which is also slowing me down because that's like five books, and they're like enormous. <laughs> so I've been reading and reading and reading, trying to get these books out of the way. And uh, that's our book for the uh, for the week, the Alien th- things. And and again. Don't go in looking for any any self any hope on this one because it's aliens and it's gonna it's gonna be miserable. Oh come on, it dark and have... miserable though. If you look at it from the aliens' perspective, it's yeah. always a happy ending. <laughs> their, their mommies think they're nice. So, well, that's about it. I think we're we're wrapped up for the for the day. If you can, so, you know, take a moment, um, take a look at the. If you haven't followed us on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, um, the the. The podcast, we'd love to have you subscribe here. It helps us a little bit. If you're going to do any purchases, please go to the website, click on the little Amazon link or any of the stuff we put up, click through. And again, we get like a nickel or something, but it's still <laughs> pennies. It still makes Amazon happy and it keeps us going. And uh, we really appreciate the support. But it, um, from now, we're gonna we're gonna sign off. And in the meantime, keep the geek, and we will see you next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>